Existentialism is one of the most popular philosophical movements in the modern world. Many have heard about its main figures like Kierkegaard, Dostoevsky, Nietzsche, Camus and Sartre. What many may not know, however, is that there are many other thinkers of the 19th and 20th century that have been huge proponents of existentialist philosophy. And so today I would like to bring your attention to my country of origin, which is Greece, and to take a look at one of the greatest Greek thinkers of all time, namely Nikos Kazantzakis. Nikos Kazantzakis was born in 1883 in a Greek island named Crete. And much like Fyodor Dostoevsky, Kazantzakis may have been a philosopher, but his philosophy is mostly expressed through his fictional novels that he wrote. Works like Zorba the Greek and The Last Temptation of Christ remain some of the most well-known works of literature in the history of Greece. Additionally, one can gain great insight into the world of Kazantzakis by reading his travel books in which he journals the insights and experiences he got from traveling to other countries like China, England, Russia and Japan, or even his historical book dedicated to the history of Russian literature which I personally found fascinating. So, what is it that Nikos Kazantzakis writes about? Well, let's take a look at one of his best-known novels, Zorba the Greek. In this book, an unnamed narrator, who is implied to be Kazantzakis himself, travels to Crete. This narrator is an intellectual who is constantly studying, thinking and writing about deep philosophical questions, like the meaning of life and the existence of God. The reason he travels to Crete is so he can in a way escape the lifestyle of an intellectual, for it has become daunting and troublesome. In the island, the narrator meets a Greek peasant named Zorbas, with whom he quickly becomes friends. Immediately we notice a great dichotomy between the two characters. The narrator is clearly emotionally distant from his own desires. He is hesitant, constrained, and he always overthinks the situations he finds himself in. On the other hand, Zorbas is an expressive, confident and truly free individual. He enjoys playing music and dancing when he feels creative. He is very successful with women, even though he is quite old in age. And in general, he lives his life based on his instincts, without apology for being who he is. As you can understand, when these two characters come together, there is immediately a substantial difference in their personalities. And yet, because they are both good-hearted people, they find great interest in each other, instead of creating conflict. As a result of the events of the story, Zorbas the peasant ends up becoming a sort of mentor and teacher to the narrator, despite the fact that he is clearly way less educated. Zorbas is happy to admit to the narrator that he doesn't have anywhere close to the same level of knowledge as him, and so he constantly asks him philosophical questions in hopes that he will have answers. Instead, however, it becomes clear that for all the reading and the studying that the narrator has done, he still hasn't come to any definitive conclusions in regards to the important questions of life. Questions about God, morality, death and love. If I had to present this entire book in a single theme, I would say that it is a book about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. For Nikos Kazantzakis, to have intellectual knowledge and education may be important for understanding some aspects of life, but at the end of the day, until we find real passion and practical intuitive wisdom, our lives will never be complete. It is in fact in denying and setting aside our intellectualism that we discover the beauty and the value of existence. It's important to note that Kazantzakis does not advocate for a completely carefree attitude. He does advocate having gratitude and embracing happiness, but simultaneously he believes in taking absolute moral responsibility, similarly to someone like Fyodor Dostoevsky. In fact, he is also heavily influenced by Christianity and Christian ethics, to the point where he essentially uses Jesus Christ as the moral template by which his characters are judged. In the book Christ Recrucified, we follow a small Greek village in the Ottoman Empire whose villagers decide to portray Christ's passion in a play for Easter, whereby every villager will adopt a role. 
The protagonist, Manolios, is given the role of Christ himself, as he is seen as the most morally pure person in the village. In trying to imitate their roles, we see how the villagers really start to adopt certain character traits and how the story of Christ's passion is actually parallel to how people act in the real world, regardless of time period. And more importantly, we see how our actions can actually change our moral constitution, even if we're just acting in order to imitate an ideal, namely Christ. Things are made even more explicit in Kazantzakis' great non-fiction book, The Saviors of God. Kazantzakis brings all of his philosophical ideas and condenses them into a 100-page poetic essay, in which he talks about how the image and the spirit of God can be seen through the violent and bloody struggle of humanity throughout the ages. He stresses the fact that we have an immense burden of responsibility to our past generations who sacrificed and struggled greatly in their vision of a better tomorrow. For Kazantzakis, God is real, God is present, and it is in the hands of man himself to transcend his weakness and to fight the moral battles of life in an attempt to imitate and come closer to him. This is the essence of the existentialist philosophy of Nikos Kazantzakis, a man who combines a life of pure, authentic pleasure and freedom with the deep moral conviction of a Christian. Of course, there is much more to talk about. Nikos Kazantzakis is a very complex person who has gone through many things in his life. He has been inspired by Nietzsche, by the Buddha, by many other traditions as well. But I think the main gist of his entire philosophy is the summary that I provided previously. He is at heart a sort of Christian existentialist who tries to explain how passion and morality can coexist and how they are in fact the key actors in the great play that is the human condition.